when we talk about the Ohio State Buckeyes of the 2019 season, it was a dominant run. And I mean, a very, very dominant run. You're talking about probably one of the better complete teams, I would say, even, 20, even in 2019. Of course, LSU had its magical spark, and it's one of the greatest teams of all time with uh, with the greatest offensive production that we've ever seen. But Ohio State was a different animal. They were elite on defense, and they were elite on offense. They were elite on special teams. This team had no weakness. It was very similar to Clemson of 20 of last year, right? Um, Clemson was just a complete football team with, with barely any weaknesses. Ohio State was was the Clemson Tigers of last year, a team with barely any weaknesses. Um, you're talking about a program that Urban Meyer left. He's gone. You know, one of the greatest coaches in college football history, one of the greatest coaches in Ohio State history, if not the best coach you can make an argument for in the history in, in the in the history of the program. Even though we all, you know, Ohio State has a lot of legendary coaches um, about it, but you're talking about a guy that resurrected the program has had multiple 11 win, 12 win seasons since the 2012 season and he leaves. He leaves, right? His heart, you know, as far as just his condition, you know, it's just he doesn't feel healthy, um, tons of stress, um, and, you know, he's gone. So Ryan Day has to step up for your program. You're also missing Dwayne Haskins, another really, really good quarterback. So now you have to, if not, again, if you look at the production that Dwayne Haskins put on, it's the most productive that any quarterback in Ohio State history has ever done. So he leaves the program. Um, so it's a lot of stuff. We all know Ohio State was going to be dominant. We all knew Ohio State was going to be really, really good. But they haven't made the college football playoffs since the 2016 season. And even when they did make the college football playoffs during that 2016 stretch, they got absolutely demolished by Clemson. So there were going to be a lot of question marks. Michigan was on the rise. A lot of people been hyping Michigan up, especially them implementing a new offensive scheme of them going more to a spread type of offense. A lot of pressure was gonna was putting was gonna uh, was getting put on Ohio State for them to step up and for them to really take control of the Big Ten and to finally make it to the college football playoffs since the 2016 year, and that's exactly what they did. Um, you get a guy like Justin Fields, a transfer from Georgia, the number one ranked quarterback in the 2018 class, even further ahead of Trevor Lawrence, who was number two. So you get him in as a transfer, and. Ohio State just takes off, man. They just take they just take off. And they have had one of the more dominant stretches I've seen in I've I've ever seen in a long time. Um every ranked opponent they played against, they looked like they were the better football team. They looked like they were the more complete team. Right? Justin Fields has one of the most efficient seasons in Ohio State history, throwing for like what, less than five interceptions in a year, which is absolutely incredible. He becomes a Heisman Trophy contender. You look at Chase Young, what, the most dominant, and I mean the most dominant season I have ever seen an Ohio State defensive end just have, or what, or just period. Just him coming off the edge with the quickness, the strength, the power, um, the agility, and for him to get after the quarterback, I mean, you saw dudes triple team him and they couldn't stop him. Right, you saw the death of this Ohio State team on both the offensive side of the ball and the defensive side of the ball really shine. It's something that I, I didn't even see for Clemson last year. You saw guys there on the second, third, fourth string. These guys were making plays all over the place. Right, the running back position, J.K. Dobbins, he resurges himself as being one of the best running backs in all of college football. The offensive line, it, it, it might have been the most dominant offensive line, even more dominant than LSU's offensive line. This Ohio State offensive line was pushing dudes six, seven yards in the backfield, and, and J.K. Dobbins and Master Teague, these guys are out here doing their own thing. Matter of fact, I, look, every Ohio State running back that had the ball had averaged around five yards a touch. It, it, it's crazy. Ohio State was absolutely insane, and they were loaded, whether it was at the quarterback from the quarterback position all the way down to the kicking position. I mean, this team was loaded all over the place. This team did go against some adversity. This team had some trouble, but they fought through it. They fought through it. 
Um, I believe it was against Penn State. This team fought some adversity against Penn State. And then you look at the Big Ten Championship game, most notably the Big Ten Championship game, where Wisconsin, for the most part, looked like they were the better team. Like they just wanted the game more. Um, but Ohio State came back, they fought through it, and they resurged themselves as being one of the more dominant teams in all of college football. Ohio State looked like they were they, they, they were the most, just the better team. They, they, they look like they were the national champions. That's what they look like. They look like the, the regular season national champions. I, I know LSU went undefeated, and they had a better resume. But, man, Ohio State, you can't deny they were the most dominant program that year as far as just their regular season goes and, their conf, and, their po, and just uh, what we saw in the conference championship. This team was dominant. I, 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 can't, I can't stress that enough, man. Um. Especially when you have two Heisman Trophy contenders in Justin Fields and Chase Young in the same from the same school in the same year, go to New York. Of course, they didn't win it. Joe Burrow, a former Ohio State football player, <laughs> was there and he won it. Um, but man, the program looked as dominant as we ever seen this pro team ever been. Even with Urban Meyer there, I've never seen a program like this before. I've never seen a team. That looks just so damn complete in the comp in the level of competition that these guys were going against. It's not the ACC. This is the Big Ten, right? This is the Big Ten. You got teams like Wisconsin. You got teams like, um, well, Michigan. They're a pretty decent team. Uh, Penn State, Minnesota. With what we saw from them, Iowa. Um, these Ohio State took off against those teams. They took off, man. And um, I, man, it was just such a great regular season and such a great. I would say postseason right before the playoffs started. But then the playoffs started. And Ohio State, they're playing against Clemson. They're trying to get revenge. They're looking for a natty run. They got the talent. They got the coaching staff to do it. So everyone thought Ohio State was going to cruise by and probably play LSU in the national championship. Ohio State, it looked like in the first half that they were going to do it. This team was up 16 to nothing. The offensive line blew, plat, blew past that Clemson defense. Those guys didn't know what the hell to do. Justin Fields looked pretty okay for the most part. Didn't look like his best, but he played pretty okay. He was efficient. J.K. Dobbins did whatever the hell he wanted to do. You saw Chris Olave and guys like Garrett Wilson. And, um, you saw guys like K.J. Hill, um, Victor. Those guys did a great job as far as them battling the Clemson defenders. Um, the defense, the defense, right? Yes, Chase Young wasn't getting the sack numbers like we expected him to, but you saw other playmakers from that Ohio State defensive line, that front seven, really show out. Um, you saw the secondary in Sean, with Sean Wade and, um, oh my God, this is really about to kill me, Jeffrey Akuda And Jeffrey Akuda shut down Justin Ross and T. Higgins. As a matter of fact, T. Higgins and Justin Ross, those guys said, hey, listen, th those guys th did the best job against us. Then they, w We've never seen a team really shut us down like that before and even those guys had to admit it but then they just let it go right they let it they let the lead go it was 16 to nothing and then Clemson came back they came back and they ultimately won that game now if you're an Ohio State fan you're pissed and you're pissed for a number for a number of reasons number one because they were missed calls and I mean they were they were arguably missed calls you look at the fumble recovery which ultimately Again, Ohio State, again, I thought it was a fumble. If that dude scooped that ball up, he scored a touchdown, imagine if that score would have stand. It could, it, it could have changed the momentum of the game, and Ohio State could have been the winner. You look at the Sean Wade ejection call. Um, again, it's an argument whether he did or not, whether if he leaned with his head, but he ultimately, again, Ohio State's second-best corner and one of their best defenders gets ejected after making a great play. He gets ejected with a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit on Trevor Lawrence which ultimately gave Clemson life in order for them to put the drive that they did and make the comeback that they had. It just sucks, man. Um, they were missed calls in that play. But ultimately, Ohio State, they let the game go. Um, there can't be any excuses. They let the game go. And I did think Ohio State was the better team. They were more talented than them. But ultimately, they just let it go. They let it go. And that's their season. Um, a season where a lot of people thought that this could have been the greatest college football team maybe of all time as, as far as just a talent level, as far as a coaching. Again, it's one of the best stories because of Urban Meyer leaving and all of a sudden his replacement comes and puts up the possibly the greatest season in, in Ohio State history. 
you have two Heisman Trophy contenders, and it, it just it just goes to waste. Um, it goes to waste. You know, uh, you look at the offseason goes. J.K. Dobbins he leaves to be expected. Chase Young leaves to be to, to be expected. You saw some of their best players go. Um, and again, if you're a Ohio State fan for the entire offseason, you have to live with the fact that, damn, we could we just let it go. We got screwed by the referees. We let the lead go. And we could have been playing against LSU, and we could have won that game against LSU. That's pretty much if you're what you're thinking if you're an Ohio State fan. But if you're going into the 2020 season, they bring a lot back. You look at the defensive side of the ball, it's one of the deepest, deepest um, cores as far as defensive players in, in the entirety of college football. Sean Wade decides to come back. You got guys like Baron Browning. Um, you look at guys like Borland who stepped up majorly for them. Just Tons and tons of death on the defensive side of the ball for Ohio State coming back. You look at the offensive side of the ball, Chris Olave, your best receiver, is coming back. Justin Fields, one of the best quarterbacks in all of college football, coming back. You got three out of the five offensive linemen, which three of those guys that are coming back are absolute All-American monsters. Um, Garrett Wilson, like I said before, Master T, who was the backup, but again, was one of the more productive backup running backs in all of college football. So a guy that can easily step into the shoes of of, uh, of J.K. Dobbins and can put up a, a really, really, really great season. Um, so Ohio State, they're looking pretty. They, they're looking really, really pretty going into the 2020 year. You look at the Big Ten Conference, uh, Penn State, I think it's getting better. We're going to find out about Michigan. Um, you know, we'll see about Michigan State and obviously Iowa and, we'll, and Wisconsin. And we'll see if those teams can catch up. If Minnesota can hold on to what they did um, this season as far as um, or last season as far as having that 11-win season. But ultimately, Ohio State looks like the favorite. They got a lot of coming back. They're bringing another top five recruiting class. Julian Fleming, Fleming, the number one player as far as ESPN rankings or the number one re- receiver in the entire country. He's a guy that can make an immediate impact as a true freshman. They bring a lot of they got they bring a lot of great, great recruiting talent, top five nationally recruiting talent coming into this season. So Ohio State looks again, they they're sitting pretty, right? And, you know, one thing that Ohio State has done for almost a decade now is that they've competed. They These guys have had 11, 12 win seasons since 2012, and they're competing for Big Ten championships and playoff spots and national championships. It's Ohio State. Ryan Day still there. Um, Ohio State looks like a team that can easily get back there, even with the loss in their schedule. They look like a team that can get back there and right the wrong for what happened uh, during that Clemson game. Now, of course, Bama, I think, will get better. Clemson will get better. We'll find out about Georgia and some of the other teams in all of college football. But Ohio State, if you're an Ohio State fan, you got to be excited going into the 2020 season with the stuff that you're bringing in. Ohio State can look like, they could look like potentially your 2020 national champions. And I think the scary thought is these guys are going to be coming for revenge, especially when most of those players felt like they got screwed by the referees. So... Um, you got to be excited if you're an Ohio State fan going into 2020. It should be a good one.